Hey guys, how's it going? Firebox here. I think it's about time for me to release another updated cleric guide. I know the last one was quite a while ago, and to be honest, a lot of things have changed. There's a lot that I want to talk about. I'm going to start with the perks, skills, and then go into our equipment. And what I think for solo gameplay is the best setup that you can use. Alright, let's go ahead and start with the perks. First, you're going to want Advanced Healer. This is extremely strong to increase your healing. Anything you can get that's going to increase this is going to be worth taking. Second is Perseverance. This is very strong not only for PvP, but also for PvE. Three damage of all types from every damage source is extremely strong. Always take this perk. Protection from Evil is very, very strong. Most notably, it's really good against Warlock players because their curses are going to last a lot less time on you. And being that Warlock can be a little bit of a tough matchup if they're trying to kite away from you. Having their spells deal less damage to you because of the duration is always something that's good. Finally, you're going to want to take Brewmaster. The reason being, if you do not take this perk, Ale actually acts as a debuff. Meaning that protection from evil will make ale not work as good. So, if you want to use ale, you have to use Brewmaster if you want it to not last about 5 seconds. For solo gameplay, none of the other perks are going to be worth taking. But weapon mastery, you're not going to want because of the specific build that we're going to be taking. And I'm going to explain that to you here in a minute. Holy Aura. It's okay, but I don't think it's worth taking for solos. Kindness, you don't need it. Requiem, you don't need it. And Undead Slaying, you really don't want to take a perk dedicated for PvE because your biggest fight is going to be against other players. Now for skills, some people are going to have different opinions on this. I am going to recommend that you do Smite and Spells. The reason being, Smite scales quite well with the magic staff to the point that I personally prefer using this over judgment. Judgment does have its place if you want to go with a plate cleric build and you want to use a mace and a shield. In that case, I would say, yeah, don't take smite. But if you want to do the build that I think is best for solo play, I would not recommend that you take judgment. I would recommend that you take smite. All right, for spells, for what we're going to be doing, I'm going to recommend always taking these five. Lesser Heal, Holy Strike, Bless, Protection, and Sanctuary. You're not going to have enough knowledge in the very beginning of your game when you have no gear to take Sanctuary. You can opt in the very beginning to take Divine Strike instead. The only thing is, I don't think this is that great, and it's really a small benefit as soon as you get enough memory i want you to take divine strike off and put sanctuary on the reason is for solo play specifically i think there is more utility to be found in sanctuary than earthquake most of you probably know that locust swarm is not good you really probably never see it when you're playing and there's a reason for it it's just it's just not great earthquake can be good in certain situations, but if the other person knows what they're doing, they're just not going to move during your earthquake. And if that happens, you might end up also getting pelted by arrows because most classes in this game has some kind of range and you don't really want to be sitting still. We're in a ranged meta right now, in my opinion. And with that in mind, taking a spell that's going to require you to sit completely still to deal damage to another player probably isn't worth taking. However, Sanctuary is kind of nice for extra healing. It has multiple benefits. One, you can heal in Storm, and if you have campfires, you're basically going to have unlimited healing for the entirety of the game. You can use it against Rangers and any other class that hits you from range that is somewhat far away to use as a heal to save your lesser heals for the main fight because lesser heals are a lot easier to use while you're fighting but sanctuary can be used to heal a little bit more while you're in a little bit of a safer spot 
You also have the extra benefit of dealing damage to undead, but to be completely honest, I don't really ever use it for this intention. I always save it for heals on myself, because you never know when you're going to need extra healing. As far as the other spells go, they're all required. You need lesser heal because it's probably the best spell you have as cleric. Being able to insta-heal yourself is amazing. Holy Strike is very strong. It deals a lot of damage, and if you build towards magic damage, you can just straight up kill players with nothing but Holy Strike. Bless is a really strong buff. Do not underestimate 3 Strength, Agility, and Will. This is going to make all of your other spells that much stronger and your combat that much stronger. Highly recommend using this spell. And Protection is really, really good as well. You can use it to counteract rangers because if they hit you and you cast protection again they're going to just re-hit your shield which is going to save you heals it's also something you're going to want to always use before a fight starts and if you didn't know using protection will block headshot damage just like a blue protection potion will meaning that it's more than just 20 hp because if they hit you in the head you're not going to take that additional damage not to mention the scaling you have for your spells. Now I want to go over what I consider to be best in slot for the gear. This is going to include attributes and the specific type of gear that I think you should be trying to grab. First things first is going to be the magic staff. The reason being it directly scales with smite and it's going to make the damage that you're dealing significantly higher than if you were doing a mace and shield. You could opt to do Mace Shield with Judgment, but in my opinion, if you want the best solo cleric build, I think using Smite with a Magic Staff is better. And for attributes, this is kind of going to go for all gear, or at least most of it. Number one is all stats. Cleric benefits hugely by having every single stat getting plus one. It's going to increase your magic damage, your spell cast speed, your resourcefulness, which is already very slow, and of course your strength and agility. For secondary stats, this is a little bit more flexible, and the best part about this build is you don't really need best in slot to make it work. You're basically just looking for anything that's going to increase your magic damage or additional knowledge except for your magic staff because we don't want it on this specifically. This is going to include will, additional magic damage, true magic damage, or any other magical damage bonuses because this is going to increase our holy strike damage as well as our smite scaling, which is going to be very important. For your spell book, I am going to recommend that you look specifically for knowledge to cast faster because it is going to allow you to cast your heals quicker, your buffs faster, and whenever you're in a fight, that extra second or so that it takes to cast a spell can make a difference. So if you can find a spell book with plus knowledge on it or plus all stats, it is going to be beneficial for you. Aside from that, magic healing can be good. I would recommend not going for magic damage on your spell book because specifically when I play, I focus on using my magic staff for dealing holy strike damage. So for the book, I would recommend all stats and or knowledge for faster cast speed. Now, the major aspects of this build is that you do not want heavy plate armor. The reason is movement speed in solos is king. A little bit of extra plate armor is not going to save you from most fights. It's true. If you're really late game, you can go for the full ruby silver cuirass and you can go for really high DR. But, in my opinion, for general usage and what I think is still just the generally best build that you can do, I like to go for high movement speed. For your hat, I'm going to recommend the Chapelle de Fur or the Chaperon. If you go with the Chapelle de Fur, it is going to give you two base agility, which is quite strong. It is going to give you a little bit less movement speed, so it's going to take away some of the agility benefits because of your movement speed being slower. But... This is still a fine choice, and it is going to give you a little bit more protection than the Chaperon. Aside from that, you are going to want to be looking for the plus all attributes 
and magic damage, as I discussed previously. For your chest piece, I am going to recommend the Oracle Robe, because 2 Knowledge is quite important to help you increase your casting speed, which is really good as a cleric. It's great and all to have good magic damage when you're casting your Holy Strikes and using your Smite, but when you're trying to kite away from people and using your spells to keep yourself buffed and healed, having increased cast speed is very important. And the Oracle Robe is also quite light, meaning that you can keep your movement speed pretty high up there. For your legs, I'm going to recommend the Loose Trousers. These are really good because we don't really care about armor rating in this build, meaning that these are going to give us the best stats we can possibly get for the lowest penalty of move speed. For your boots, I am going to recommend Lightfoot Boots. These are going to give you the highest movement speed buff possible. For the gloves, I'm going to recommend Riveted Gloves because these are going to give you plus 2 base strength if they're green. And an additional 2 strength for free is going to be more value, in my opinion, than the other gloves. For our pendant and rings, I think this is a little bit flexible. I'm going to recommend that you go for agility or strength. And then, of course, you're going to want to go for the plus all attributes and or additional magic damage on top. I think strength and agility, even though this is wanting to be a decent will build because you want that magic damage, I still think strength and agility are by far the best stats in the entire game. Strength giving you more HP and just flat damage and agility giving you that movement speed. So finding these trinkets with the base agility and strength stats are going to be just generally strong. Same with the cloak, just go for a strength or agility cloak and just look for generally decent stats. I also want to go over the gameplay a little bit here. While you're playing, I would highly recommend that you always carry at least two campfires. These are going to be needed if you want to regenerate your spells at a reasonable rate. Don't be greedy. If you get into a fight and you use a few holy strikes, use a campfire, get them back because if you get into another fight, you do want to have full spells if possible. I'm also going to recommend that you always bring green ale. There are cheaper ales available, but the difference between 7 strength and 11 strength is really a big deal. And you don't want to lose your entire kit because you were greedy and bought white ale or gray ale for a little bit less gold and then died because of a few hit points. It's also really useful to have a few clarity pots if you can afford it. These seem to be really expensive right now. So don't worry, if you can't afford them, you really don't need them. You just have to be a little bit more careful about where you're spamming your spells. If you find that you use a lot of spells in a fight, sometimes it's best to just leave the area, put a campfire down, and get your spells back instead of continuing to push for more PvP. Clarity Pots are just a way to get your spells back at a slightly quicker rate, especially when you're in the middle of a fight and you need more spells right then and there. Now that we've gone over what I think are the best attributes, gear, spells, perks, and skills for Cleric, I want to go over a little bit about the different matchups. Cleric is by far my most played class. I'm going to go over what I think are the good matchups, the bad matchups, and what to watch out for. Fighter are your loot pinatas. In general, if you find a plated fighter, you are going to have an advantage over top of them. Hit them with your Holy Strikes, hit them with your Magic Staff Smite build, and they're going to crumble very quickly, especially if they're rocking minus Magic Resistance. Just be careful of their crossbows. If they do hit you, make sure you back away, use your protection again, heal up yourself, and try to get into the fight as quick as you can after they're hit with Holy Strike, and you can try to hit them with your Staff. Barbarians are doable, but can be very scary when they're completely juiced. If there were any matchups, I was going to say can be really, really hard for the class because every class has their counter. Barbarian is probably one of them. If Cleric is Scissors, Barbarian is going to be the rock. This doesn't mean that you can't beat them. If you can try to kite away from them because you are going to have high speed, you can use your Holy Strikes to try to soften them up before you get into a fight, but beware, if they're really juiced, they might just kill you in one to two shots because of the current state of the game. 
So my best advice I can give you is when fighting a barbarian, just try to use as many holy strikes as possible before engaging unless you absolutely have to and go for the headshots with your staff. Rogues are kind of a mixed matchup because they are pretty weak against magic, but because of their high mobility, they do get to choose when and where they fight you. So a good rogue will wait for your buffs to be gone before they engage. However, if a rogue tries to just fight you with your smite up, you might just kill them in one to two hits. It's all going to depend on how weak they are to magic and whether they're smart enough to wait for your spells to be gone. This matchup's a little bit polarizing. The best I can say is just try to listen out for them because if they do get the jump on you, it, it can be hard to win that fight. Rangers are a very problematic matchup because we don't really have the same range capabilities that other classes have, such as Crossbow Fighter. The best way that I can describe how you want to play against a Ranger when they're shooting at you run towards them while looking down at the ground trying to make it hard for them to hit your head while also trying to use your protection spell as much as possible so if they hit you you can use your protection spell again and you're going to instantly get way more hp than you would be getting if you were healing yourself normally not only is protection going to protect you against the headshots but if you're moving your body in a way that's hard for them to hit you they might just end up hitting you in the limbs as well dealing significantly less damage. Once you get into close to mid range, you can use your Holy Strike on them and try to finish them off that way. But just beware, Rangers are quite strong against Cleric and it's probably one of the tougher matchups. I would recommend trying to fight them in an area where you know they don't already have traps set up because scudding into a trap can be really, really bad for you. Wizards don't really exist in solos, but they can be very strong against Cleric. The best thing I can say is use your Holy Strikes to try to kill them because hitting them with the staff is going to be near impossible if they're a good wizard player. Fortunately for you, at least right now, they don't really exist that much in solo play. So don't worry about them too much. If you see them, just Holy Strike them and they'll either die or they'll run away and I'm sure you'll be fine. Cleric is obviously the mirror matchup, so it's going to depend on what kind of build they are running. But just remember, they have a limited amount of spells, just like you do. So if you can make them waste their holy strikes, make them waste their heals, go in for a kill when maybe they're a little bit low on HP because you made them use their resources, that will be the best time to kill them. But just remember, as any mirror matchup goes, it's going to depend on most likely your gear and just how much you can outplay them. Bards can be really tough if they're running six drums, you know, two crossbows, a hand crossbow. All range like that is really hard to deal with with Cleric. Plus, they do have a silence ability, but a lot of them don't run it. Your best chance of winning this fight is, quite honestly, for them to get overconfident, see you in what looks like to be near starter gear, and chase you, rush into you, and hopefully you can kill them with the smite staff. Because if they do nothing but kite away from you, with drums and the crossbow you better hit your holy strikes because if you don't they're gonna kite you pretty much for the entirety of the dungeon warlock is a little bit of a mixed matchup as well but i think warlock is worse than cleric specifically against cleric of course i think warlock because a lot of them are using the phase shift ability holy strike will deal insane damage to warlock if you can hit it correctly and if they are using BOC, just beware, that ability is getting nerfed soon. But once they use it, try to just kite away from them because it will deal a lot of damage. But if you get into a spot where you have to fight them, your smite staff can keep up in DPS. It is going to deal less damage, but you might be able to kill them before they can kill you. But that's going to depend on how good your gear is. Just remember, Holy Strike is your best friend as far as dealing with classes like this. If you can hit them before the fight starts you're going to have an advantage. And that's going to be my cleric guide. I hope you learned something today. I really try to give all my information I could as quickly as I could. I hope you stuck with me until now. If you liked the video, give it a like. Sub to the channel for a future comment and comment below any opinions you might have. I want to thank Kid Brutal, Old Duck, and Gamatron for supporting this video alongside my other members. Thanks all. Have a good day.